Hey everybody, in this Blender to UDK Fundamentals course, I will be showing you um, the very, very basics of environment art. And this comes right down to the textures and what they do. So, to begin with, I will be starting off with um, these three different textures, Diffuse, Specular, and Normal Maps. Then we'll be moving into uh, Blender, where we'll create a low poly and then a high poly model. Then we'll be baking out texture maps in X normal. Then we'll be bringing it all into uh, Photoshop to do some touch ups and create the diffuse map. And we'll be bringing it into UDK to uh, get a finalized version. <coughs> so, to start with, um, what I have here is a combination of three different texture maps. This middle one is a diffuse map, and this is where the color information uh, comes from. Over here we have a specular map, and this uh, defines what is shiny and what is not shiny. The darker areas are not shiny, so in between these crevices will not be shiny. However, these whiter areas, such as here, will allow more shininess. For future reference, game engines are getting away from specularity and going to a, uh, uh, a physical based material system and I'll probably do a tutorial discussing what that is. But basically specular maps are on their way out. Over here uh, we have a normal map and a normal map is either derived from a uh, a diffuse map like this to fake depth information or they are baked from a high poly to a low poly model to also fake lighting information. This is all done in order to create the illusion that uh, a low poly model is in fact a high poly model. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and head over to uh, Blender. Alright, I have Blender open here. Let's go ahead and click off the screen. Let's open, uh, get that full screen, and let's just start deleting some stuff out of here. Uh, actually, first, I'm going to screencast the keys, and so you can see what's going on right down here. I'm just going to delete that. i to delete this. And we have our little mesh here. At this point, I go into orthographic view, which is essentially with uh, viewing the object without any uh, distortion. Now let's go into front view, and let's scale on the x-axis. That looks pretty good. Now let's scale on the y-axis. There we go. Um, let's scale a bit down on the x-axis. X, yeah, I can't speak. Let's scale down on the x-axis a little bit more. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create the topology or the uh, the way in which the polygons are arranged and so we can do some sculpting uh, in Blender. I'm not going to be doing this in ZBrush, I'm going to be doing this in Blender to keep it all localized. So let's hit tab go into edit mode. And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to add some supporting edge loops. Let's go ahead and uh, hit Control R and scroll up one. And left click and then right click. Oh, whoopsie. Nope, X. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Oh, by the way, um, If you do not like the right click to select things, uh, change this in input to left click. Um, I don't personally like it and uh, it will show up down here as left click rather than right click. Just wanted you guys to be aware of that. So next I'm going to add uh, two edge loops here. Let's go ahead and scale up on the Z axis. What you want is for this to be square, these corner pieces to be square. 
and I'll tell you why here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and do it here again, or here as well. The y-axis, make sure they're square. Looks pretty good. So now you'll notice that we have several squares here, but we have larger pieces, larger uh, polygons over here. For sculpting, we need um, even polygon size throughout the mesh. The reason why is because as we, as we subdivide, we'll have bigger polygons here and smaller polygons here, which will not give us even sculpting definition. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Control R and let's add an edge loop here. Some edge loops. That looks pretty good. Let's do it for this one. That looks pretty good. That's already done. Let's go ahead and hit numpad three. Let's get those there. And that looks pretty good. Now we have some pretty even, nice looking topology. So at this point what we're going to do is we're going to adopt a somewhat um, 3ds Max style modeling. Let's go ahead and go over to um, the modif modifier panel. Let's add a modifier and let's add a multi-resolution modifier. Go ahead and subdivide, subdivide, subdivide one more time. Well, you can see right up here the face count, and that we're at 90,000, so I'm going to subdivide one more time. Kind of laggy, so I'm going to drop it one. And I'm going to smooth shape. Alright, at this point, we have a perfectly good model that is ready to uh, be sculpted. So I'm going to make another tutorial on that here briefly, and I'll see you in the next one.